From the Newton's second law of motion, we know that the force is a product of mass and acceleration. F is equal to mass into acceleration, where acceleration can also be written as the change in velocity per unit of time. We also know that momentum is nothing but the product of mass into velocity. Therefore, del P is equal to m into del V. Substituting this in equation 1, we get force is equal to del P by del T, which is also what Newton's second law tells us. Therefore, change in momentum or del P is equal to the product of the force and the change in time. We call this change in momentum as impulse of the net force and such forces which act for a limited amount of time are called impulsive forces. So now, the question arises that if we have the same change in momentum for two different impulsive forces, will the effect be the same? Let us find this out by dropping eggs on two different floors. Let one of the floors be a concrete floor and the second be a cushioned pillow. When you drop the egg on the concrete floor, it will break because a large force acts on the egg for a very short interval of time. Here, del P is equal to F net 1 into del T1 where F net 1 is the net force applied by the concrete floor for the extremely small interval of time del T1. What happens when you drop the egg on a cushion pillow? Will it break just like the concrete floor? No, the egg doesn't break. This is because a small force F net 2 acts on the egg for a longer interval of time del T2. Thus, del P in this case is equal to F net 2 into del T2. As you can see, the change in momentum for the egg is the same in both the cases. Just before hitting the floor or the pillow, both eggs have the same speed and come to rest finally. Therefore, F net 1 into del T1 is equal to F net 2 into del T2. However, the egg comes to rest faster when it hits the floor than the pillow. Therefore, del T1 is less than del T2. Thus, from equation A, we can say that F net 1 is greater than F net 2. Since the magnitude of force is much greater when the egg hits the floor, it breaks immediately but stays intact on the pillow. Thus, a huge amount of force, even though it acts for a short amount of time, can have a large impact, while a small force acting for a large amount of time may have no impact at all. You can also relate it to something as simple as trying to catch a ball. When a fast moving cricket ball comes at you, you pull your arms back while catching it. Do you know the reason? Try not to pull your hands back and you will know the reason. The ball will definitely hurt. When you don't pull your hands back, your hands act like the concrete floor in the previous case. The amount of net force on your hand will be really large and you will not be able to control the ball and thus maybe drop it. But when you pull back your hands, they behave like the cushion pillow, where a smaller net force acts for a longer time. Thus, you are not only able to control the ball, but also easily catch it. Again, you can notice that the change in momentum of the ball in both the cases is same. So, finally, we can conclude that the change in momentum depends on both the net force as well as the amount of time it acts for. We also saw two different examples that the large net force, even if it acts for a short amount of time, can have a huge impact, just like what happens to the egg when it drops on the concrete floor. Till next time, happy learning.